Good evening. Welcome to Leaders in Action, Episode 6 of Season 5. Tonight, we talk about this phenomenon that has caught much attention in social media and some concern in the workplace. Quiet quitting. For workers, just meet what is stated in their job description and nothing more. Workers who are doing the bare minimum are not new, but the numbers seem to be significantly increasing after the pandemic. For instance, it is reported that in the U.S., almost 50% of employees are noted to be quietly quitting. How is it kaya dito sa atin? Is quiet quitting a result of changing work values and expectations? Is it the consequence of people wanting to achieve a greater work-life balance? Or is it a symptom of issues in management? What can the company and the leaders and agency leaders do to address this concern? Good evening, everyone. We hope that you are all doing well whatever is the weather in your area right now. This is going to be a very exciting discussion and we're very happy that you can join us again tonight. The topic that we will be discussing impacts both the individual and the organization. But before we go straight into the subject matter, we would like to thank again our very special guest last week, the lovely power couple from AIA Philippines, Cebu, the district managers, Nilo and Esma Tunog, for sharing with us their secrets to a successful partnership, not only as husband and wife, but as business partners as well. Daghang salamat, managers Nilo and Es. Now, on to our topic for tonight. With many organizations trying to find ways to address changing customer needs and expectations, there is a need. No? It is very critical that they have fully engaged people who are willing to go the extra mile and collaborate with others. But this thing, quiet quitting, no? called quiet quitting, may prevent this from happening. I recall Mr. IB during our time, which is not really too long ago, the constant call of organizations then was for everyone to go above and beyond what is expected. And when people respond, companies meet their objectives, their goals, their targets, while individuals uh, career flourish. Pero minsan mapapaisip ka rin. Somehow, is there a trade-off in the quality of life of the person? Meron ba talagang nasasakripisyo? Oh, and is that trade-off a reason why quiet quitting is talked about more during this time? To help us answer these questions and to better understand this phenomenon, we are privileged to be joined tonight by the country head for marketing of Job Street Philippines. Dear friends, leaders, please help me welcome our special guest sharer, Mr. Kim Martin Virai. Hi, Kim. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Miss J. Hi, Sir A. I. B. Good evening, Paul. Uh, good evening, and thank you again for accepting our invitation to be our resource person about this trending phenomenon in the workplace now. No, thank you. Actually, it's my pleasure to be in your show tonight. Thank, thank you, uh, Kim, for joining us. Uh, by your presence, bumaba na average age ng palabas na to. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll just start it off. Uh, I know you have been uh, in marketing for quite some time. So maybe briefly, no? uh, how has that field really changed? And uh, in, in Job Street, what is now the focus that you have as the country head of marketing? Yep. So 
right now actually for Job Street Philippines by Seek. Um, I lead and drive the local marketing strategy together with my team. And one of my focus and one of our advocacy actually as a company, not just for myself, is to really provide jobs for every Filipino. And now more than ever, um, I strongly believe that marketing plays a vital role in the company, maybe in Job Street or in any other companies. And as a marketer, being more purposive and having mm -hmm. an impact in the society is really one key difference in change that I want to bring in the table as I embark this new journey with Job Street Philippines by Seek. So just to share, actually, I just recently joined Job Street six months ago. So mm -hmm. I'm a fresh blood um, in this company. So, uh, ano yung nakita mo sa kultura ng Job Street when you first joined? Um, you know what? I found it very refreshing how Job Street really values work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, it was not just for the sake of doing it. Um, in Job Street, it's really intently being done for the welfare of the whole um, Job Street employees. All right. Very, very nice to hear. No? Uh, before we proceed, aklarin lang natin sa nakikinig sa atin that when we talk about employers, we mean management, bosses, or leaders, mm -hmm. or agency leaders. No? And for employees, this will include not just the salaried employees, pero yung mga contractuals or in contract like our financial advisors in the industry. No? Uh, Kim, ano, from the perspective of the employers, what are they now looking for uh, from someone who is wanting to join a company? Um, you know what? Um, in today's ever-evolving working conditions, um, job seekers are actually encouraged to work on soft skills that will allow them to really thrive and be more productive regardless of role, position, or industry. Mm -hmm. And the top three soft skills and qualities that the employers are looking for right now includes number one, uh, teamwork. Uh, most employers are really looking for someone who can foster collaboration at work. Okay. And then number two, um, active and continuous learning wherein most employers are also on the lookout for those job seekers who are yearning and hungry to learn new skills and knowledge on an ongoing basis. And then number three, of course, um, very important as well, critical thinking by having an intellectually disciplined process of skillfully synthesizing and evaluating information gathered from observation or experience as a guide to believe in action. And then, of course, aside from those three that I've mentioned, right, there are more other soft skills and qualities that the employers are looking for right now, which includes um, survival skills and complex problem solving, flexibility and adaptability, time management skills, communication and social influence, emotional quotient or EQ, and lastly, being able to really thrive in a virtual environment or having tech literacy. So those are really the top uh, soft skills that the employers are looking for right now in an employee or job seekers. Alam mo, Kim, uh, well, listening to, to you, no, parang I, I say to myself, buti na lang. Uh, <laughs> time na, baka hindi ako pumasal lahat dun sa mga magagandang sitat mo. Yeah? But truly, that's really a reflection of uh, what uh, a person must really possess no, if he or she wants to have a great career moving forward. Uh, from the perspective naman, Kim, sa mga naghahanap ng trabaho, yung job seekers, di ba? So sila naman, what do they want uh, companies to have uh, for them to join that organization? Outside, of course, yung maybe financial financial rewards. Mm -hmm. From the perspective of the job seekers, nga, no, oh. um, according also to our latest global talent survey, it was found that uh, job seekers actually prefer to work either completely remote, remote or um, in a hybrid setup if given the choice. All right. um, si since the pandemic, more companies and employees have already adjusted to working from home and mm -hmm. they have seen the advantages of this setup in their work productivity, business goals, and overall work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, um, another key consideration that job seekers are placing high importance right now that really attract them uh, to companies is by being a socially aware company. 
So oh, nice. the yeah, the new and emerging job seekers have also started considering the stance of the company they're applying for when it comes to diversity and sustainability. Talaga. So normally, those companies that actively implement relevant initiatives are most likely to attract the new um, candidates right now. But overall, um, as you've mentioned, more than the salary, um, job seekers have a new equation on whether a job is worth it or not. Mm -hmm. They consider their lifestyle preference. They also mm -hmm. look for convenience, welfare, beliefs, work-life balance also, and location, among others. Again, after hearing what you said, buti na lang, I retired as CEO kasi napakaraming demands ng mga employees ngayon. All right, but but having said that, no, I think it's very important that really the companies and organizations must be so sensitive, no, and and uh, very much ad adaptable to the current situations and what lies ahead in the future. Salamat, Kim J. Yeah, uh, Kim, uh, follow up, no, do sa yung sinabi kanina that uh, one of the top factors that job seekers are looking for in the company are those who can provide hybrid work setup. Okay. Now, uh, World Health Organization recently said that the world is nearing the end of the pandemic. Although mm -hmm. I think in our case, it will come later than sooner. Okay. Now, considering these two items, um, have you seen uh, more companies already resuming back to the face-to-face? or face-to-face -face operations sila, or is the hybrid setup really what we can expect as the now normal in the workplace? Yep. Um, as shared earlier, nga, no, um, employees now prefer flexibility in their work, and we believe that the hybrid setup offers this benefit for both employees and companies. When it comes to employee engagement, um, hybrid gives employees the flexibility to work in the office to get the human interaction that we create for while being able to stay at home and have more time for their families. Um, also, according to another um, study that Jobs did recently, which is called Decoding Global Talent, which included over 15,000 uh, Filipino respondents here in the Philippines, um, the study showed that they really prefer to either work from home entirely or a hybrid arrangement already. The data also predicted that the number of full-time employees working from home will comprise 34% of the workforce by 2023 due to the spike caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, um, the hybrid model becomes the company's business continu continuity plan because at any given time, they can continue their business as usual, right? However, um, to thrive and make this setup really work, um, companies also need to start adapting to the future of work by finding a balance between governance and flexibility, by incentivizing their employees, by empowering its people, by providing them with tools, and of course, by monitoring the progress of these changes through feedback surveys or interviews. Do we see this trend already being um, experience in reality? Uh, meaning to say more companies but are really adapting the hybrid already or some of them are still insisting hindi, kailangan face-to-face -face na, balik na, pwede na tayo. Yeah, a lot of companies have already really employed hybrid setup but at the same time, they're quite flexible because of the very unpredictable um, COVID situation also in the country. But to answer your question, yes, um, a lot of the companies have already um, implemented this in the Philippines. Okay, okay. And you said uh, a while ago na, syempre, no, in terms of, uh, or from the perspective of the employees, they really prefer no, itong hybrid uh, setup na ito. But um, from the perspective of leaders, how difficult will it be, you know, or ano ba yung kailangan paghandaan nila in a hybrid 
um, set up. No? Because I hear a lot of leaders complaining also, Ala, ano ba yan, no? I'm asking my people to report back to the office, okay? But yun nga, they would re really prefer uh, the working under the hybrid uh, setup. So ano sa tingin mo, Kim, ang kailangang paghanda? No? Ano ba impact nito sa isang leader kapag itong hybrid setup eh, will continue or really be the now normal? Yeah. Actually, uh, that's a very good question, uh, Ms. J. And for our agency leaders nga, no? It's very imperative that we or they we actually have to adapt to this new normal setup, which is already hybrid. Um, what's really important here is to continue to engage our team members, um, the uh, to to find a balance. Uh, Ika nga dun sa sinabi ko kanina between um, governance and flexibility because uh, with the hybrid setup, talaga. Um, hindi natin fully, uh, unlike sa full uh, office, uh, what do you call it, reporting to office setup, hindi natin fully talaga makikita what our team is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, at the end of the day, it's really a matter of how we build connection and relationship with our team members. And a lot of that lies on how our agency leaders or managers will really be able to manage their team members. Okay, so again, no, so leaders listening out there, no, so talagang hindi natin maiiwasan na there's no way of avoiding the hybrid setup. So as Kim has suggested, no, make sure na talagang yung engagement natin, no, the relationship, no, that we still have with our people, and of course, no, striking the balance between yung flexibility as well as making sure that the governance no still there mm -hmm. no are are considered to be very imperative no for agency leaders to survive no and for leaders to survive mm -hmm. in this new uh, work setup yeah and miss j just to add to that yeah. no i'm sure over the past two years that we've been working from home and hybrid there's a lot that our agency leaders have learned as well in terms of really how we can keep the engagement high with our team members. So um, it's good to look back and see what really worked and what worked because there's really no one size fits all when it comes to our employees. At the end of the day, uh, iba iba yung personality, iba iba yung character ng mga team members natin. So we really have to also tailor fit how we will really manage our team given this new setup or new normal that we are currently facing right now. Siguro Kim, uh, during uh, later, no, um, in our other questions, you may still add, no, ano ba yung other ways? Because ngayon medyo naririnig namin na complaint ng mga leaders, eh, ano na to, eh, parang may burnout out na rin daw <laughs> sa, <laughs> sa ano, itong sa ano to virtual, na ba? So parang na, naubusan na rin sila ng gimmick <laughs> kung paano nila mas ano to, mas ma -e engage yung mga uh, employees no, or yung mga tao nila. No, under this kind of setup no so uh, maybe we can hear no additional mga tips no or suggestions from you thanks sure. thank you man. Kim, the last uh, couple of years we've heard terms like great resignation uh, great retirement uh, ngayon naman lumalabas uh, sa, sa social media yung sinasabi nga natin quiet quitting di ba so mm -hmm. how do you define quiet quitting or is this simply a new label for something that has always been there in the past? Yeah, uh, yun nga eh. uh, I remember this term actually trended and started from on TikTok. Yeah. Um, but quiet quitting um, is really a recent term that refers to employees putting boundaries in their work and don't want to be exploited for working beyond what they are hired and compensated for. Um, mm -hmm. One of the factors would be really the shift when it comes to job seekers' preferences. Mm -hmm. And um, according also to our studies, nga, we found that Filipinos specifically, they really take their preference and lifestyle in con into consideration when it comes to their career and decision making. Um, I think more than worrying about quiet quitting, we really recommend for companies to put their employees' welfare as a top priority to keep them engaged in their job. Is this essentially really the, the employees finally uh, finding the time during COVID to reflect 
that uh, this is what my life should be. And ha having realized that, now they begin to, parang na-enlighten ba sila in such a way? Tingnan mo na, parang hindi, hindi balance, hindi tama. Eh. Ganun ba yon Or they just expect something much more from their employees or from their company? Yeah, I think... Um... Over the course of the pandemic, since we were also all uh, situated from home for the long in the longest time, right? There's really a lot of uh, realization. Um, you could be right. These are some um, realization from the employees nga na maybe uh, they feel like they deserve so much more. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they also feel like uh, they just only want to deliver what is really expected from them. Um, there were a lot of discussions or sharing also about the hustle culture, because especially on the younger generation right now. Mm -hmm. And right now, they want to change that notion and just really stick to what is really expected from them. Thus, the, the birth of this term, quiet quitting. Mm -hmm. Parang, pero, uh your experience of local companies or even multi multinational companies in the Philippines, uh, are they ready to parang find a solution to this or do they expect their employees to go the extra mile? Yep. Um, definitely the companies would always still expect their employees to go the extra mile. Um, it's really, I think at the end of the day, data shows that it all actually lies to the leaders, our agency leaders, on how we can really keep our employees, our teams um, motivated mm. at the end of the day. Uh, that's, that's correct. No? Uh, even during, during the past many, many years, it, it has often been said that diba, umaalis, hindi dahil sa kumpanya, umaalis dahil mm. sa... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, sa manager niya or sa boss niya na no, immediate. Uh, likely that uh, there are certain things that still do not change. Ano? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Kim. Uh, Jay? Uh, Kim, uh, Mr. IB mentioned about the great resignation, no? which was ano to, parang the buzz word last year. Uh, with great resignation, yung symptom nung kasi is very, ano to, eh, no? very clear. Mm -hmm. They resign. Employees resign. <laughs> okay. However, in quiet quitting, the employees do not actually resign. Right? They do not actually quit their jobs. No? And since this is something new, maybe most of or many of our leaders still do not know whether they already have quiet quitters in their midst. No? So okay, my question is, how do we know, know that uh, an employee or a worker or a team member is already into quiet quitting. Ano ba ang manifestations nito? Ano ba ang mga symptoms nito so that leaders will be able to be ano to, no? extra watchful? Okay, mm -hmm. these mga symptoms na yan. Okay, paliwanagan mo nga kami dyan, Kim. Yep. Um, I also read an article actually about quiet quitting and according to that article from Harvard Business Review, um, it's really a new name for an old behavior already. Mm -hmm. And researchers have been conducting 80-60 degree leadership assessments for decades and have regularly asked people to rate whether their work environment is a place where people want to go the extra mile. To, to better understand the current phenomenon of quiet quitting, they look at the data to try to answer this question. What makes the difference for those who view work as a day prison and others who feel that it gives them meaning and purpose? And then from the same study, um, that data indicates that quiet quitting is usually less about an employee's willingness to work harder and more creatively, and really more about a manager's ability to build a relationship with their employees where they are not counting the minutes until quitting um, time. So to answer your question, Ms. J, there's really, unlike with the great resignation, that they will just instantly resign, right? There's really no clear um, manifestation that we can see right there and then that would show 
that our team is already in the verge of quiet quitting. So wala siyang parang clear cut no uh, sign mm-hmm. or, or manifestation. Yung bang kukunwari eh pag 5 o'clock ang off eh 5 ano to 4:49 ako ay nakapila na dun sa ano to sa time in time out. Time in time out. <laughs> time in time out. Uh, uh, bang kahit sabi ng boss ko na pwede ba magstay ka pa eh hindi boss hanggang taga 5 o'clock lang ako. Uh, nakikita natin naman yan before, no? Mm-hmm. Pero ngayon, uh, sinasabi nila, parang isang form na daw ba yan ng quiet quitting? Yung bang pag uh, in- in- pinapag nire-request tayo na mag-overstay, not necessarily overtime, okay? <laughs> Overstay without pay, no? Eh, dati-dati, eh, parang very common yan, no? Ngayon, eh, yun nga, h- hindi na masyadong wini-welcome ng mga team members yan. Yan ba ay mga manifestations ba yan? Pwede ba natin sabihin mga signs yan ng quiet quitting? Yeah, could be. Uh, possibly sign of quiet, quiet quitting. Um, to my point earlier, um, the, the leaders, our agency leaders, our managers, they could really somehow, somewhat tell uh, if there are changes in the character also of our team members. And right there and then, somehow we can see or somehow we can feel if we if our team is already leading or directing to Uh-oh. quiet quitting but hopefully hindi naman sana oo so da, da makikita no? i mean so that's why it's important that leaders really know their people no kasi okay. parang makikita nila if there's a sudden shift no kasi kung dati dati hmm. nagvo-volunteer pa to okay lang hanggang 8 o'clock ako magtatrabaho and then suddenly biglang ay, hindi po 5 o'clock aalis na no aalis na ako no uh, ito kailangan medyo uh, ano na ba yan parang mga red red flags na ba red yan flags, so, yeah. no? red flags na ba yan sa mga leaders Mm-mm. Kaya nga important talaga yung relationship as what I've also mentioned earlier because by having that close uh, relationship between the agency leaders or the managers and their employees, uh, there will be more open communication and with that open communication, um, the employees or the team members will be able to also freely uh, share what's on their mind and by doing so, our agency leaders as well can start possibly thinking of ways on how to shift uh, in case uh, our team members are already going down that route of quiet quitting. Kim, uh, curious lang ako. Uh, you've mentioned about soft skills for new uh, job seekers. No? Are companies conscious, following what you've mentioned, no? are companies conscious on developing their existing and new leaders on those same soft skills? Sorry. Are companies conscious? Are companies conscious of the need for their own leaders to also have those soft skills so that they can engage and communicate with their existing and new uh, employees? Yep, yep. Actually, uh, now more than ever, not just for um, new employees, but even for middle managers, talaga. These are some of the qualities and skills that are being somewhat required for them. Um, given the pandemic also, a lot of these soft skills are some sort of like becoming a standard already to be able to be successful as an agency leader or leader or manager in any mm-hmm. other company. So more and more that companies are really investing on a lot of trainings, training and development to be able to um, develop their soft skills to be able to be a more successful agency leader or manager. That's very good. Now, uh, based on what you've seen or the data that you've seen, is quiet quitting more prevalent uh, in the younger generations or it's really being experienced across the board? Um, As mentioned, no. Um, It really came from the TikTok trend that uh, sparked the conversation. So we can say that this is generally apparent in younger generations, and this is probably due to them being advocates of work-life balance talaga. Mm -hmm. And as well as the pandemic um, has taken its toll when it comes to the overall welfare of many employees. 
Hence, a lot of people are really trying to strike a balance between work and their personal lives. Um, furthermore, um, a lot of job seekers nowadays consider their lifestyle preference when it comes to their career decisions. Um, among all those many viral TikTok videos on quiet quitting, uh, likewise mentioned that with this concept, nga, no, most Gen Z no longer subscribe to the hustle culture mentality that work has to be yeah. your life. Because yeah. the truth is, um, it's much more than that. And mm. by doing so, it's already hurting you more than you know. Mm. Um, there's this quote, um, your worth as a person is not defined by your labor. It's the more common thinking among the youth nowadays talaga in respect of quiet living. Mm. And uh, again, based on what you've seen or whatever uh, report that you have read, uh, how how has the com- how has how have companies or organizations responded to this very recent uh, quiet tweeting uh, phenomenon? Are they parang medyo na concern ba sila o nasabi nila it's another it's another fad anyway that will go away? No, as mentioned, um, it's just actually um, a new term to an old behavior already. So most of the companies are actually quite familiar on how to handle this uh, uh, already. They already, uh, depending on the situation, also for employees, they have, or most companies are also formulating how they can really keep their employees engaged. Um, at the end of the day, um, a lot could be said and done more than the employees, but also on the leaders on how they really need to lead and how they can really um, inspire more their employees. I think what's good about this is that there's a discussion that's happening around Mm. And as you've mentioned, and as we've experienced in our career, these things have been happening for decades, correct? Mm. Yeah, lang hindi masyado nabibigyan ng ng focus. Focus. Man, it will just pass. No? Ngayon, parang because there's so much ano, discussion na medyo mapapalingon ka na and say, oops, tandali mo na, pag-isipan natin. Okay, otherwise, this thing can really impact our long-term uh, success. Thank you, Akim. Ah, Kim, uh, gusto ko lang tanungin, is quiet quitting generally good or bad? When do you, when, when, when is it, when is it bad? <laughs> And when is it good? Okay? Or good ba talaga ito? Or bad ba talaga ito? Yep. Um, I think doing your best job while putting boundaries is good for employees to keep work-related stress and exhaustion at bay. It also encourages them to work smart and to make use of their time and the company's resources efficiently. It becomes bad if someone is not maximizing their time and does not contribute well to their team. And then it becomes dangerous if they remain disengaged, if it creates conflict between employees as some will feel others are not carrying their weight. Mm -hmm. Um, While we advocate the overall welfare of our job seekers, we also encourage them to really pursue and get as many opportunities as they can that will help them gain more knowledge and skills. Now, now having said that, there might be a very thin line that will separate, I will just give what is due from me, okay? And the same time, parang di-disengage na ako. So... Mm. Kim, I, I, I think this is going to be a very challenging from a, no, no, for a leader. Pero paano ba talaga mag-identify or madidistinguish ng isang leader? No? So that uh, I can really say na, okay, itong, employee, itong aking team member na to no, just need some time, you know, just need some uh, parang uh, engagement from me. Pero yung isa talaga masasabi ko na na, Okay, uh, mukhang talagang disengage na ta. Disengage na ito, no? Kailan ba masasabi na isang leader that it is really time for me to let go of this ano na, no? This team member kasi talagang medyo ano na eh, quiet quitter na talaga eh. Yeah. 
I think when it reaches that point that the performance is really greatly affected already, mm-hmm. uh, that's a major red flag. Uh, even before, nung wala pa talagang quiet quitting naman. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's why we have our KPIs, our performance reviews, and I feel like that's really a good um, indicator for the leaders to start and spark that conversation between uh, them and their 30 members. Okay, so parang bottom line, yung performance pa rin, no, would be the mm. best way to gauge no, uh, if the person is just quiet quitting no, or talagang totally disengaging already no, sa, mm. sa team. Okay. Now, uh, as a follow-up to that also, and we mentioned kanina, lagi natin naririnig, no, uh, you said that quiet quitting is greatly affected by the way leaders no engage or yung klase ng relationship they have with their uh, team members no um uh, ba yung mga factors no from the side of the leaders that can trigger quiet quitting from their team members paano ba nako ng isang leader na, bak- na para mag quiet quitting ng isang ano isang team member niya mm-hmm. yeah um one of the leader-related factors that can really trigger this is by having a poor employee management. Um, poor employee management can trigger poor performance among their employees. Examples include consistently overworking your employees, um, lack of recognition, sometimes even instilling fear or lack of mentoring and proper feedback and lack of proper communication channels and having a toxic work culture um, among others. Uh, Many people at some point in their career have really worked for a manager that moved them toward quiet fitting. And this actually comes from feeling undervalued and unappreciated. It's possible that the managers were somewhat biased or they engaged in behavior that was inappropriate. Employees' um, lack of motivation was more like more of a reaction to the actions of the manager. On the other side, most mid-career employees have also worked for a leader for whom they had a strong desire to do everything possible to accomplish goals and objectives that they want. Um, occasionally, even working late or starting early was not resented because this manager really inspire them. So my point here is that it really boils down on how our leaders or our agency leaders would really um, properly um, manage their employees by having that open communication and having that strong relationship where they can freely um, share, uh, talk, guide, mentor, and give uh, proper feedback to each other. Okay, so very well said, no, Kim. Uh, at least you have outlined what are the things no, that leaders can do to avoid no, and to prevent no, their employees to experience no, or to go into yung quiet quitting. No? So she said mm-hmm. no, open communication, no, the regular feedback, no, recognizing them and making them feel valued. Now, mm-hmm. Kim, are these the same things leaders can do when their employees or their team members are actually into quiet quitting already. Kasi yung kanina, ito pa yung parang ma-avoid ko, ma-prevent ko, no ba? Uh, para, kasi nga, pwede kong i as an agency leader no? or a leader. Mm-hmm. But once not my, unfortunately, meron na akong team member na who's into quiet quitting. Are these the same things I need to do as a leader para maalis ko sila ulit doon, mare-engage ko sila ulit doon, mare-reverse ko ba ang quiet quitting? Um, what can you say about that? Yes, uh, definitely. Everything that I've shared earlier can help reverse uh, those who are already in the verge of quiet quitting. Um, but to add to that, no, parang aside from the leaders also, um, the, the contribution of the whole uh, company or organization plays a big role to keep its employees satisfied and engaged. 
um, aside from having people focus HR management, it's also important to have uh, supportive managers and team leaders or agency leaders who can develop positive relationships with their team members or employees through open and honest communication and positive reinforcement. It's necessary to build and sustain a healthy work culture that strives for the welfare and growth of its employees. Um, I think one of the most important factors is still trust. Um, when direct reports trusted their leader, they also assumed that the manager cared about them and was concerned about their well-being. By having leaders having positive relationships with all their reports is a plus. This means you look forward to connecting and enjoy talking to them. And then some team members make it easy to have a positive relationship, right? Others are more challenging. And this is often a result of differences when it comes to age, gender, political orientation, and other factors. So as a leader or as agency leaders, you should be able to look for and discover a common ground with your team members for you to, do, to, to be able to build that trust or mutual trust uh, with your team members. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kim, Kim yeah. again, thank you. Napakarami yung nasabi from the perspective of the, of the agency leader, what that leader or leaders must, must be doing. Uh, but sabi nga nila, it takes two to tango, and right? If I'm the employee, if I'm the advisor, what's my responsibility to make sure that I go, don't go to that level that I'll quiet me? Yeah, as the employee, um, I think it's important that uh, you have to have that open communication also to your managers. Uh, by having that open communications, you can also share to your managers what are your aspirations, what are your motivations. And by having that common or mutual understanding, it's a, a two-way communication or two-way relationship that not just the agency leaders needs to drive, but with the help also of the employees. Uh, to your point, nga, Sir J, uh, it takes two to tango talaga. So, dapat talaga magtulungan, not just our agency leaders, but even our um, team members or employees. Sabi mga, it's also not necessarily bad. Na if you're a quiet quitter, you're, you're not giving your fair value to the organization. Kasi sabi mo lang, I have eight hours and I maximize my eight hours, put my mm. best during eight hours. Diba ganun yun, right? Mm. So, from perspective. On the other hand, again, reality. Uh, there is this one employee who, who will uh, come in in the morning very early, stay in late. So you have two, two kinds of people, right? Diba? Yung bang medyo towards quiet tweeting, does he have a future in the organization compared to somebody who has been traditionally diba, perceived to be a hard worker and uh, extra mild, milder? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, quiet. Uh... I don't want to tie them quiet Twitters yet, but those <laughs> going to that direction isn't generally bad. Mm. And we believe nga that employees who strive to do good at their job while maintaining work-life balance can still grow and prosper in a company that does not only innovate, but also nurture their employees' uh, well-being. Mm. But, but again, uh, compared to somebody, na parating nagogo extra mile. I, I'm thinking of what's mm. really happening on the ground, diba? You've got two employees, one who's give me eight hours, I'll make sure that I give you your full eight hours to the maximum, correct? And there is mm. this other person who says, okay, you give me eight hours, but I'll give you nine. So, mm. ngayon, knowing, I don't know if how enlightened companies are now, when it comes to promotion, realistically, sino ang Sino ang PPDN? And therefore, the question is, will that put the quiet Twitter, even if he is not umaga, being unfair to the organization, less uh, chance to getting ahead of the, in the organization? Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, more than really delivering, delivering results, right? There's a lot that needs to be considered when it comes to promote, promoting or uh, going up the ladder in the company. Um, the managers uh, would know better to assess and comparing the two, I think they still have an equal um, opportunity to to uh, advance in their career um, more than really um, delivering what is expected from them. Um, there's a lot of factors that needs to really be considered. Yes, um, it will be more the, the that person who gives you nine hours will be more visible than that person who only works within the eight to five or the nine to six, right? But uh, there are really a lot more to be considered before we can really decide or we can really tell that this person is better than this person. Yeah, I think uh, to your point, there are a lot more things that we must be considered. And mm. again, it puts the onus on the leader to be enlightened and see the total total picture. No? Uh, yes. ng uh, oras natin, <laughs> Uh, mo, naka almost ang oras na tayo eh, ha? So at this point, I will already begin to say thank you to you for a very enlightening uh, sharing uh, that you've given us and more especially uh, conversing with our leaders on what they must have and must develop to make sure that uh, their financial advisors will continue to be engaged. And if the advisors think of quietly quitting, wag muna because they have somebody who they can depend on and we'll take care of them. Huh? So again, uh, Kim, uh, all the best to you and in propagating, uh, sabi mo nga yung purposeful vision nyo sa organization. Salamat. Huh? Thank you then. Thanks for inviting me this tonight. Thanks again, Kim. Maraming maraming salamat. Kami ay naliwanagan na talk about this concept na ito na quiet quitting. No? Uh, nakita natin na talagang uh, whether or not meron itong term na to yung leaders talaga no laki talaga ng role no uh, mm. sa pag-engage pa rin no it boils down pa rin sa engagement no capability ng ating mga leaders so maraming maraming salamat ulit Kim no and we also would like to thank our good friend Philip Gioca country manager of Job Street Philippines no for connecting us with Kim no so uh, uulitin sa so uulitin mga gentlemen <laughs> so yeah so and thank you everybody for uh, joining us again with our in our real conversation, real talk with our special guest, no, Mr. Kim Virai. We would like to uh, invite you again next week for another interesting discussion, no, as we hear the story, the startup story, no, for that matter, no, of Sun Life Grepas Associate Agency Manager. Miss Grace Carpe. So that will be next week. So, uh, dear leaders, we hope to see you once again next week. That's October 13, same time, 8 p.m. here in Leaders in Action. Real leaders. Real stories. And real talk. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Kim. Stay Thank safe. You. Bye.